Dear Lord Heavenly Father, help me, O Lord God, to stop trying to take control of my life, to stop trying to take control of the things that have never been in my control. Help me to trust in you, to lean on you when I need help, to turn to you, to run to you, always and forever, because I can't do it on my own. I can't. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. They say that the parts of our life that we try to control the most, the parts of our lives where we trust God the least, oftentimes the biggest struggle that I faced when following after God is allowing God to be God in my life, allowing God's power, allowing God's love, allowing God's grace to truly manifest in my life. Now what I mean by this is that in my life, I've truly enjoyed organized chaos. And now what that means is that even though everything in my life seems to be very chaotic at the moment, even in all that chaos, I'm well aware of what's going on. As strange as it might sound, all that chaos, it may be chaotic to you, but it's well organized to me. For example, say I'm in this room and I'm chilling and I'm relaxing and I decide that I wanna try on my favorite shirt. I put on my favorite shirt, I wear it, and then I throw it down on the corner of my bed. Now I'm gonna leave that favorite shirt in the corner of my bed because I know if I ever need to find that favorite shirt again, it's always gonna be on the corner of my bed. That's where I last left it. That is how I know where to track my belongings. It's a system that I've built up since I was a kid. I'm comfortable with this system. I understand this system. I know the ins and outs of this system. Now this system, it was built just for me. It's something that I designed in my mind just for me. So to my mom, she may walk in my room and she may see a mess. She may see something that's so disorganized. But I can tell you that if my mom were to walk into my room and say, hey, where's your favorite shirt? I'd be able to find my shirt within seconds. See, one day my mom decided to come into my room. She decided to clean it up. See, my room started to look more chaotic than it did organized. My mom, she wasn't having it. Rightfully so, of course. So she decided that she was gonna reorganize my room. Now, when I got home after a long shift, I noticed that everything in my room was not where it was supposed to be. My room looked a lot cleaner, but I was uncomfortable with the fact that everything had changed. I was more focused on the way my room used to be and not how it is now. She fixed everything. She cleaned it up. She made my life better by doing so. But I felt like I lost a certain amount of control of my room, a certain amount of control that I wasn't ready to lose. And immediately when I found my favorite shirt, I took it out of my closet and I put it back on the corner of my bed. So I knew in the back of my mind that I was always gonna clean up my room, that my room could not look that way forever. And eventually I'd get to it, eventually I'd get to cleaning up my room, but I never did. I got so used to the chaos in my life that I became comfortable with it. I was okay with the way my room looked. It was my organized mess. I knew it needed to be cleaned. My mom knew it needed to be cleaned. When my mom decided to step up and take control, to clean up the mess in my room, I felt uncomfortable. I didn't like it. So I took the clothes that she had cleaned up for me and I started putting them back in the spots that I last saw them. I was comfortable with my mess. I know I needed to clean up my room. And the moment she did, I went right back to messing it up. See, we pray and we ask God to take control of our lives. When everything is too chaotic for us, when we no longer feel like we have control, when we feel like we no longer know what's going on, we ask God to step in and take control. And the moment that God starts to take control of our lives, the moment God starts to organize the chaos in our lives, we start to feel uncomfortable. We start to lose trust in God. See, we want God to take control, but we only want to give God a certain amount of control. We don't want to give him all the control. We just want him to organize a little bit of this chaos. You don't got to get rid of all the mess. Just fix up a little bit of it. See, we pray and we ask God, God, remove the distractions in our lives. So God starts removing certain people in our lives and it's, okay, thank you, God. Thank you for removing the distractions. But the moment God starts to remove more personal distractions, friends who only lead you away from God, relationships that don't push you towards the kingdom of push you away from it. It's God. You don't know what you're doing. I, let me take control from here. You, you, you've done enough. You've done enough. You, you removed the distractions I needed you to remove. You don't need to remove them. I need them. I've known them for years. I've been in this relationship for years. I, I don't trust your judgment on this one, God. I know them. I know them. I know you created them. I know you know them inside and out, but I know them too. I know my friend. I, I, I can't lose them. We have certain messes in our lives, certain messes that we're not ready to be cleaned yet. And we ask God to work around our mess and not work through it. For the word says to cast all your cares upon him. But there are certain cares in our lives that we care for a little bit too much. Certain cares that we're not ready to let go of. We welcome God into our lives. We tell God, have your way. Remove what needs to be removed and add what needs to be added. But there are certain things in our lives that we didn't know we weren't ready to let go of yet. When God takes control of your life, you have to understand and know that God knows what he's doing. 
God doesn't do anything by accident. God doesn't do anything to harm you. God isn't setting you up for failure. God knows that in order for you to go deeper in your relationship with him, certain spirits are gonna have to be left behind. In order for you to change, in order for you to grow in your faith, you have to give God the parts of your lives where you trust him the least. If you're not strong enough to let go of certain friendships, pray and ask God for the strength. If you're not wise enough to walk away from certain relationships, ask God for revelation. If you're too scared to go where God is leading you, ask for faith. Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in order for you to grow. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord.